I'm going to show you how to create a fun animated activity indicator that looks the same on iOS and Android, and it doesn't need any third party dependencies. We're going to do this using only CSS coming up in this video. Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Alex from nativescripting.com. Check out nativescripting.com for advanced and intermediate native script courses. And if you want to learn more about native script here, make sure you subscribe to this channel and click the little bell so you don't miss anything. In this native script tutorial, we're creating a loading indicator, sometimes known as a spinner, to replace the built in activity indicator that comes with native script. And we're doing this using only CSS and markup. We're not using third party native libraries or third party JavaScript libraries for this one. This video tutorial is part one and we're building a simple spinner here. In part two, which is coming soon, I already have it recorded, I just need to tweak it a little bit. In that one, we're gonna be expanding on the spinner and we're gonna make it look more like the Android built-in activity indicator. Why are we doing that, you say, Alex? Well, because the activity indicator on Android is pretty nice and it's pretty configurable, but on iOS, it's not. It's very basic and plain and it looks the same and you can't change the way it looks. So we wanna make that look consistent between iOS and Android. Android. So make sure you subscribe to get notified when that one comes out. All right, let's begin. Here we are, the good old Hello World application. I tap the button, the countdown begins. All right, this is just a native script core application with TypeScript. And here is our main page XML that defines the UI. So I'm going to clean this up a little bit. I have to clean this up every single time. All right, let's take a look at the activity indicator, the old boring one. That's what the activity indicator looks like right now in iOS. In Android, you have a few more styling options. You can change the size, the color, and so on. But in iOS, you can't. You're stuck with that little spinny circle. And while it looks cool and everything, it's a little bit boring for some applications. So let's create our own. We're going to do this with CSS. And here I'm going to create an absolute layout. Oh, that should be absolute, not like the vodka. Okay, absolute layout. And inside, I'm going to have a label. This label is not going to have any text. All it is is just going to have a look. So I need to assign a class here. And I'm going to assign a class. Let's call it CV label. I don't know why CV. Just because. And we need to style the absolute layout as well. So I'm going to give that a class of CV. That's a good start. All right. So we have our absolute layout and we have a label. Right now, there's nothing there because it's invisible. We don't have any styles applied to it yet. So let's create a main page CSS file. Now we could do this in app.css, but I'll just create a separate file for this. First of all, I wanna give our page a background color that's not so dull. So let's go over here and give it a background color. Let's use 0DC5C1. That's a nice color. I'm just gonna give us a little bit more space to work with. And I'm going to close this down a little bit so we can see the emulator as well as the code at the same time. So I want to define this CV class here. And let's give this one a background color as well. Oh, let's pick blue violet just to see if it's there. Well, it's not going to be right because an absolute layout needs a height and a width. So let's set the height to 200 and we'll do a width of 200 as well. That way we get a square. Now this might not be even running. Looks like we have an error here. So I'm just gonna restart this app. If you create a CSS file that's empty, at this time, it's gonna throw an error. So maybe that's what's happening here. All right, so that's gonna restart. And there we go, we have our purple square. So what I wanna do here is I wanna spin this square around. So I'm gonna create an animation. We're gonna use CSS keyframe animations here. And I'm gonna call this one rotate. And this is just gonna spin all the way around. So we're going to use the transform here from rotate zero degrees. I'm going to copy this one and change this to rotate 360 degrees. So now we need to use this definition for the keyframes in our CV. So I'm going to specify the animation name, which needs to be rotate. And then a few other things, animation duration, how long this animation is gonna take place or how long the one circle of the spinner is gonna to take to come around. Let's give it two seconds. Animation iteration count. 
So I'm going to set this to infinite because we want this to keep spinning. Now you can hide and show this at will, but I want this to keep spinning when it's actually visible. And then animation timing function. I don't want this to swing around erratically. I want this to actually be linear. And this is one of the few times that I will choose linear for my animation timing function because I want a nice steady circle. All right, let's take a look at that once I save it. And nice, we have a spinning square, which is our absolute layout. I want to have another square pushed up against one of these corners of the absolute layout so that one corner of the square is going to be always in the center. And that's what this label is for, this class CV-label. So I'm going to copy that. And let's go in here and create that class. Now, because our absolute layout is 200 by 200, this inner square needs to be 100 by 100 so that its corner is touching the center. All right, so that's width 100. And let's give this a background color as well. For now, I'll just choose yellow. We're going to change those colors later. Okay, so you can see that this corner right here is never moving. I can put my mouse over it and I can see that it's always there in one spot. But it's being animated because it's container parent, the absolute layout is being animated. So the whole thing is spinning. So now we need to put a circle right here in the middle to kind of cover up that intersection. All right, we could do that using another label. So I'm going to add a label here and let's give it a class. This time I'll be pretty boring and I'll just call it inner circle. All right, let's copy that class and go out here. And I'm just going to define inner circle as also having a height of 100 and a width of 100. By the way, if you're unfamiliar why I'm not defining pixels here or any other units, in native script, you don't really need units. You could specify pixels here, but it's going to be a different value on every device. It's going to look different on every device, I should say. Here, these are dips. So if you don't specify a unit, these are dips, which means device independent pixels or density independent pixels. I go into the details about this in my styling native script applications course. You can check that out. Let's give this also a background color here. And just to keep it different so we can see everything clearly, I'm going to give this aqua. Let's take a look. Okay, so we've just essentially covered up that first label. We're on top of it. So we need to move it. We need to shift it. And we want this to be a circle. So first I'm going to set a border radius to make it a circle. And in order to make it a circle, the border radius needs to be 50%. That's going to be a circle now inside that other square. And in order to push it down towards the center, I want to give it a top value and a left value. So we're positioning this inside of our absolute layout now, and we're positioning this using top and left. So that's going to be 50 and 50, which is going to push it right in the middle there so that circle doesn't move at all. Very nice. We're almost done here. Now we need to just cover up that area that's around a circle, but still leaving a little bit of space so the background of the absolute layout and that square, so they come through a little bit. Okay, so we do that using the CSS clip path. So here I'm gonna define a clip path and I'm gonna define it as a circle. I'm gonna set this to 60%. By the way, this value is adjustable to make a different thickness of the spinner. And I want to place this right in the middle, so 50-50. And I'm also gonna define a margin of 20 to kind of push that down a little bit. All right. Look at that. We're almost there. By the way, this 60% right here for the clip path, you can adjust that. So let's say we have it to 80%. It's going to be a thicker spinner. We can set it to 55% and it's going to be a really thin spinner. All right, let's leave it at 60. So now you see you're pretty much done. All you need to do is just adjust the colors. This background page color is not playing ball here. So I'm going to move that to our app.css file. Let's go ahead and add it right here. And I'm going to remove that style that's coming in from the theme. Now I can keep that in there and just do this CV page as my class here. And then go in here and just do CV page as my class for the page. And that'll work as well. Okay, so let's go back here and adjust some colors. So for the CV here, which is that purple that you see there, that's the background of the absolute layout. What I want to do is actually have the color of the background be slightly off and I want it to be mostly see-through. So I'm going to use RGBA here, 255, 233, 176, 
and this is the alpha channel or the transparency i'm going to set this to pretty transparent 0 0.02 so it's got a color but it's almost see-through you can adjust to whatever colors you want of course and for the label for that yellow part instead of yellow what i want to use here is a different color let's set it to ffe 9b0 and for this color, the inner circle, I actually want this to be the same color as the background. So I'm going to go to the background color, copy that, and paste that here instead of aqua. That way it looks like a hole and we see the background through it. If you want to adjust the size of this, you can always go in here and make this bigger. But of course, if you just do it here, you're going to need to adjust the other sizes as well for all the other components that are part of this. You can probably just create a little script that does this programmatically and creates this for you programmatically and distribute that as an npm package or a module so you don't have to keep writing this for every single application in the next video we're also going to build this kind of spinner that's shown down here now this one is very close to the android built-in one however on ios there is no way to get that natively so you have to actually build one and we're going to do this also without using any third-party plugins so keep an eye out for the next video and subscribe so you get that notification. Hey, I got a question for you. Do you want to see more native script animation related tutorials like this one? Let me know down in the comments below and also let me know what framework you use. Angular, Vue or just plain old native script core. You can also follow me on Twitter where I tweet about random native script related stuff. I'm at Digitalix on Twitter. And make sure you subscribe to this channel where I give you native script tips, tutorials, and tricks. And I will see you in the next video. All right, bye.